Welcome to this online worship service at Christ Alone Lutheran Church in Mequon and Thienesville, Wisconsin. It is a joy to be with you this day. We are celebrating the sixth weekend in this season of Epiphany as Christ continues to unveil things about Him and about our relationship with Him. And today, especially to be able to see how He uncovers our great status, our enviable status because of the gospel. God bless your faith through this study today. Let's begin by lifting our voice in singing, Praise the Almighty, my soul adore him. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you 
and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Let us pray. O God of power and might, you know that we live in the midst of many great dangers, and in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Give us strength and protection to support us in all peril and carry us through all temptations. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading, the Old Testament for today, is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17, beginning at verse 5. Notice the difference between the curses of those who turn away from God and the blessings for those who follow and believe in him. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The Word of the Lord. We join now in singing today's psalm, Psalm 1. Yes. 
Our second reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, beginning at verse 7. Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Word of the Lord. Our Gospel acclamation for this day, Alleluia! The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Alleluia! Gospel according to the Gospel of Luke chapter 6. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal regions around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured. And all the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue with our hymn of the day, Come unto me, ye weary.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We read again our text from Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 8. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. This is what the Lord says. What goes through your mind when you hear those words? Do they, do they demand your complete attention? Do you listen to them like you might listen to an emergency announcement or an amber alert? Do you quiet everything else down so that you are not distracted and can get the full, clear message? Or does life just go on as you wish it to go on? Are these words just phrases along with so many others you've heard that, well, listening to them with your intense listening skills is really not important right now? Today, as we consider the words recorded for us in the prophet Jeremiah, we will do well to note that when the Lord speaks, we need to listen to live. To listen in such a way that we trust in God and not ourselves, so that we might be blessed as we put on our confidence in Him. In the opening verses of this chapter, we have a brief review of Judah's history before God. The prophet writes that Judah's sins were etched or carved into the very heart of their existence. Permanent, you might say. Time and again, the Lord had exhibited his mercy and patience with his chosen people, and they had pursued the idols of their day. Led by Satan, rather than God of the covenant, they would lose everything. They would lose their wealth and all their treasures. They would lose their country and their homes. They would lose their inheritance and their freedom. They would be enslaved by an enemy nation, and God's anger would burn against them with unending fury. Now, you might ask, how could that be? Israel had witnessed God's power and might, his patience and his love, his miracles and providence. How could they go on with a lifestyle so opposite that of the Lord's doing? and choosing. Was there something special about it? Was there a special prize that drew them away? Some wonderful hope they strove to attain? Actually, just the opposite is true. And that is when we hear, this is what the Lord says, cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. <coughs> cursed to be separated from God, to be condemned, to have blessings totally remo removed with no hope of reprieve. No hope. We need to listen. For we live in a time not unlike Jeremiah's. Oh sure, there were no cars, electric vehicles, no internet, no social media, no phones, none of the blessings we consider to be part of civilization. But the same sinful nature that was then infects us still. A sinful nature that refuses to follow the Lord, to help his, and look for his help and guidance, his forgiveness and strength, his direction in life. A sinful nature that looks to what humans can accomplish and depends on that. That same sinful nature that turns from the true God to depend on itself for its own strength. And what does that look like? Well, Jeremiah gives us an illustration, doesn't he? For those who want to trust in themselves, to trust not in the Creator, but in the creation for strength, he said they'll be like a bush in the wasteland, like a green tree or a shrub in the desert. No life, no moisture, lost and dead. Would that illustration not get someone to listen and learn, get someone's attention? You'd think 
That would be the case. But sadly, for too many, they don't want to listen. They'd rather believe in what they can do and in what the created can do instead of relying on the creator. The result would be like trying to live in a salt land, like that land surrounding the Dead Sea. But there is hope, and we see that hope brought back as instead of being cursed, God's people are blessed. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Now there is the key to life. Not depending on ourselves, on our abilities, on what we can do or what man can accomplish, but depending entirely on the Lord. The contrast of these two philosophies is the difference between a desert and paradise and a lush garden. Jeremiah put it this way, would be like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. It doesn't fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Wow. Would anyone turn from that blessing? Why would we doubt the Lord when the droughts of life come our way? Why do we fail to trust in the power and love of God? The God whose love is so great for us that nothing less than his one and only son was the sacrifice offered for you and for me. He promised to never leave us or forsake us. He is the one whom even the wind and the waves must obey. What worries do we have? What worries do we have that he can't handle? What troubles come our way and that we encounter that he doesn't have a solution for? He solved our need for forgiveness. His patience and love met our desperate need to be his children. There is nothing. Nothing he would not do for you. He could not do for you. He will not do for you. Through all the difficulties of life, trust him. Be wonderful in his presence. Put away the doubts and temptation that Satan puts before you and put your trust in God. Be like the tree near the living water. Let your roots grow deep into that water and let the fruit be constant with us. There are so many things that frighten us today. There's violence, there's illness, rumors and threats of war. There's so many things that we would look, what am I going to do? Instead of just saying, Lord, what would you have me do? Because when the word of the Lord comes to us, it comes to us in all his truth. It comes to us in love. And he just tells us, listen. Listen to what I have done for you. Listen to what I offer you. Listen to who I am and what I do for you, my creation. Yes, when it comes to God, listen to the Lord and his word. Listen that you might learn and live. Live in blessing, not a wasteland, in the blessings of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding keep your hearts and minds in that true faith, trusting solely in Jesus till we stand with him in glory everlasting. Amen. I invite you now to join with me as we make confession of our faith, that wonderful faith that God has worked in our hearts using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join in the prayer of the church. 
Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Plant your word in our hearts and cause it to produce fruit in our lives. Strengthen and defend your church that by your word, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Support all who spread the light of your truth throughout the world. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Raise up Christians to serve you in the ministry of the word and in all godly walks of life. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom that they may promote justice and hinder evil. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Be with all who devote themselves to any useful task. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Grant them your love and take them into your tender care. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again and has taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go now in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Let's close with singing the hymn, My Heart is Filled with Thankfulness.
I'm so glad you joined us for this service. I hope it has emphasized for you what an enviable position you are in because of faith in Jesus Christ. We're very glad also for the support that you give to this ministry, both financially as well as by encouraging others to listen to this word of God. How many people don't really know how enviable they truly are because of Christ? Maybe through you they will learn. Before we dismiss today, let's take a moment to listen to this month's edition of The Wells Connection. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. You're likely aware that Wells Christian Aid and Relief responds to events like hurricanes and tornadoes where a whole community is suffering. But another facet of the work focuses on tragedies that affect just a single family, personal grants that can make a life-changing difference for individuals in need. Lake Mills is a, a wonderful bedroom community. Has a lot to offer to families, not only in raising them, but also in the activities on the lake. St. Paul has played an important role in the history of the Lake Mills area. The church has always been there. That has been the constant. That doesn't go anywhere. The ability to go and share in God's word and pray together and ask people to pray for you. And it's a normal Wednesday night, and Landon had started screaming that has had a belly bad headache, and it, was, and it was really bad. It was Ash Wednesday of 2019. It was during, I believe, uh, the time of our Lent service. Uh, he had the seizure. I'll never forget this because it's embedded in my head. I told my brother in law, I said, Call 911, something's really wrong here. It took him right to Children's Hospital in Madison. He had a massive brain bleed and it, his outcome was uncertain that he, if he was even going to make it alive after this. So Landon spent about 10 days he was in a coma. Is he going to wake up? How, how do you make this decision about your eight-year-old child and just like hope that it's going to work, you know? And then as time you know, progressed and we were there for quite some time, I mean Landon was there from March to September. It was very traumatic for everyone, especially when you see a young man go through such an experience, wondering whether or not he would survive this life. But we were also very confident that if that was the Lord's will, we knew that he would be in heaven with his Savior. At that time, he was, Landon was not talking a lot of the time, but he went out of his way to tell the pastor to read him a Bible verse. We had made arrangements uh, that we as pastors would go to the house. I walked into his room, and the first thing he said to me is, Pastor, it's good to see you. Can you please read me a Bible story about Jesus? Read a Bible verse because I wanted to remember Jesus. Jesus means that he died on the cross for all of us. What I loved about all of the pastors at St. Paul's is every single one of them reached out and they were like, what, what can we do to help you? Can we come and visit? Can we pray with you? Can we pray for you? What, does, what do you need from us? Well, when I realized you know, how much it was gonna cost uh, for the family to purchase a handicapped accessible van, which legally they had to do uh, to transport him, um, I knew that there was a way for us now to help them. And I found out about Christian Aid and Relief and how they can help in this way from another pastor. We do personal grants for people in our congregations who are just struggling in some aspect of life. Maybe they've got some uh, major medical bills uh, or some other financial challenge. And so we work together with congregations who contact us uh, to give those people some uh, financial uh, assistance that they need. It was just amazing, and our, and our congregation uh, to date has collected almost $20,000 to help pay for that van, and the balance was covered by Christian Aid and Relief. And without their help, I don't think that would have been possible. <laughs> it's 
always amazing how God finds another way to get you there or to answer a prayer you maybe didn't even know you had. And so we got the van. I mean, within six weeks, pastor was like, here you go, we've got this, we're gonna help you. It was the Lord who held them up and it was his strength that carried them through. And they regularly confessed that and that was beautiful. It's just so humbling. People who we have never met, never will meet here on earth who were willing to help Landon and help us do the things that are most important is still to be able to travel together and um, ultimately it's to go back and have Landon worship his Savior in, in church. To see the relief and I think that's what Christian Aid and Relief is all about. Giving them the relief that they're not alone and that they have others they can count on. Landon's story is a beautiful illustration how Wells Christian Aid and Relief offers opportunities to demonstrate our Christian love. Whether it's a natural disaster, or a need at one of our world missions, or a family that's hurting, Wells Christian Aid and Relief is there as a way to show love to our neighbor, reflecting the great love Jesus has shown us.